and former Alaska Senator Mike Gravel. Senator, thank you. And Senator Gravel, for those who may not be familiar with your past, two terms U.S. Senate from Alaska, you played a role in the fight to cut off money for the Vietnam War. What would be your advice, Senator, for the elected officials on this stage who are at a conflict, opposed to the conflict, but also feel the need to uh, keep on funding the conflict? Well, first off, understand that this war was lost the day that George Bush invaded Iraq on a fraudulent basis. Understand that. Now, with respect to what's going on in the Congress, I'm, I'm really embarrassed. So we passed, and the media is in a frenzy right today with what has been passed. What has been passed? George Bush communicated over a year ago that he would not get out of Iraq until he left office. Do we not believe him? We need to find another way. That's where I, I really would like to sit down with Pelosi and with Reid, and, and I would hope the other senators would focus on how do you get out? You pass a law, not a resolution, a law, making it a felony to stay there. And I'll give you the text of it. And if, you, if you're worried about filibuster, here's what you do tactically. They can pass it in the House. we got the votes. It comes to my favorite candidates so far, and I'm having some evolution, but essentially they're the same. But the more I get in, so the number one candidate, Tulsi Gabbard. Number two candidate, Mike Gravel. Now, I might actually put Mike Gravel at number one because he just hits on all the right points. Now, Mike Gravel is number two. Bernie Sanders, number three. Andrew Yang, number four. And then Elizabeth Warren, number five. I'm warming up to Kamala Harris. I'm warming up to uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, de Blasio. He's got a lot of, per they have tons of progressive platforms. And Elizabeth Warren, I'm warming up to her more too. So, you know, we'll see as I'm going to look into, I haven't looked into all of their platforms just yet. But Mike Gravel, Mike Gravel, oh my God. Mike Gravel is the beast of an American. Mike Gravel is one of the best Americans that was ever created, ever. He's a great man. He's the one that filibustered the draft during the Vietnam War when he was the junior U.S. Senator from Alaska. He filibustered the draft, and that's why the draft isn't used anymore. Be there in the Senate, let him filibuster it, and let Reed call up every at 12 o'clock every day to have a cloture vote, and let the American people see clearly who's keeping the war going and who's not. And that's just the beginning of the tactic if they're tough enough to do it. Senator, Senator Gravel. <laughs> At a forum earlier this year, I want to get this right, you said it doesn't matter whether you are elected president or not, so then why are you here tonight? Shouldn't debates be for candidates who are in the race to win the race? Ryan, you're right, I made that statement, but that's before I had a chance to stand with them a couple, three times. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited, my God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> Yeah. And, and I got to tell you, after standing up with them, some of these people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. I got to tell you, I'm president of the United States. There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral, and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. Let's use a little moderator discretion here. Senator Gravel, that's a weighty charge. Who on this stage exactly tonight uh, 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 worries you uh, so much? Well, I would say... Phil busted the draft by his lonesome, by himself. So the 60s, the turbulent 60s and 70s, we only had one radical... So this is also the 60s coming back to the millennials. So the draft has not been abolished. We still have, you know, the sort of vestiges of a draft. So it needs to be abolished. Fuck the draft. But it's got a stigma against it. It hasn't been used since the Vietnam War. It's there, but it's never been used after the Vietnam War because of Mike Gravel. So the draft wasn't used after he filibustered it. And that denied so many presidents of cannon fodder after 1975. After 1975, so that denied Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton and George Bush, Papa Bush, Baby Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump 
from in you know forcing the draft and then forcing a bunch of poor peasants to go fight a war, a rich man's war, to steal other people's resources, to kill other poor people from other nations. So Mike Gravel essentially ended the fucking draft. Now, the top tier ones, the top tier ones, they made statements. Oh, Joe, I'll include you too. You have a certain arrogance. You wanna, you wanna tell the Iraqis how to run their country. I gotta tell you, we should just plain get out. Just plain get out. It's their country. They're asking us to leave, and we insist on staying there. And why not get out? What harm is it gonna do? Oh, the, you hear the statement. Well, my God, the soldiers will have died in vain. The entire deaths of Vietnam died in vain. And they're dying in vain right this very second. You know what's worse than a soldier dying in vain? Is more soldiers dying in vain. That's what's worse. Short answer question. One sentence, and uh, I'm going to ask each of you, beginning with Senator Gravel. This is from Paula in Conway, South Carolina. What is the most significant political or professional mistake you have made in the past four years? And what, if anything, did you learn from this mistake which makes you a better candidate? And make the sentence no longer than 20 seconds, okay? Senator Gravel. I've just grown up. I'm the senior statesman on here, and I was beginning to feel like a potted plant standing over here. But uh, let me point out to you, in one sentence, you know, I won't hold their youth and inexperience against them. Thank you, sir. Representative. Uh, same question. Uh, other than Iraq, uh, three most uh, important uh, enemies. Carter actually saved the draft in 1980, his last year in office. So they're talking about getting, you know, wiping the draft clean, getting it. Now, Jimmy Carter, he would be the one, you know, that's, uh, he's so peaceful. Jimmy Carter is a great president because he didn't fire a single bullet in his four years as president. So as the president of the empire, he didn't fire a single shot. Meanwhile, we're in seven overt wars now, 20 covert wars. Burkina Faso. Hey, American people, remember when you voted to go to war with Burkina Faso? Hey, Congress, remember when you declared war against Burkina Faso? Oh, yeah, that's right, because you didn't. Neither one of you all did, but the president's got us in Burkina Faso now. So Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Niger, Nigeria, these are the makings of a Vietnam War. So, you know, it's kind of crazy to think there was actually a time when we didn't, uh, we weren't at war with Jimmy Carter. So Jimmy Carter is great because he never fired a single bullet when he was president. Even today, every American man who turns 18 years of age has to sign up for the draft. It's called selective service, so the draft... ...to the United States. We have no important enemies. What we need to do is to begin to deal with the rest of the world as equals, and we don't do that. We spend more as a nation on defense than all the rest of the world put together. Who are we afraid of? Who are you afraid of, but Brian? I'm not. And Iraq has never been a threat to us. We invaded them. I mean, it, it is unbelievable. The military industrial complex not only controls our government lock, stock and barrel, but they control our culture. Well, uh, your two terms in the Senate representing Alaska have sat on top of, of course, a huge reserve of oil. Uh, with the French system as the model, is the United States, in your view, woefully behind in its use of nuclear energy? No, not at all. I think there had to be a maturation process, and I'm the one that started the nuclear critique in this country. I'm also the one that denied the boots on the ground for George Bush today when I filibustered at the end of the draft. And I'm also the one that brought about the Alaska pipeline by one vote in the Congress. So when you ask about the energy issues or the other issues, let me just tell you, I want to answer the question on the war and, and on what's going on. We are mischaracterizing terrorism. The civilian leadership and the commander in chief has a responsibility to make sure that they have the plans that are going to allow our troops to succeed in their mission. Senator Edwards, did the, are the troops, did the troops in Vietnam die in vain? Uh, uh, don't think. So fuck the draft, fuck the draft. If a government needs a draft in order to force its citizen to fight a war, that's not a war that's worth fighting for. If a war is worth fighting for, the people proudly rise up to the challenge. If we're being invaded by China, I guarantee you'll see every American from young to the old, from, you know, every color, black, brown, white, gay, straight, every single American would fight in an invading force. 
every single American would fight an invading force. So if a war is necessary, we would stand up. The only time you need a draft is when the government, the 1%, the wealthy, are trying to force the people into a war that they don't want, like Vietnam. So fuck the draft. Now, Mike Gravel, while he did the filibuster, he got the Pentagon Papers read into the official Senate record. The Pentagon Papers, Daniel Ellsberg, a lot of this is similar to Chelsea Manning and, you know, uh, WikiLeaks. The Pentagon Papers was a government report that was supposed to be top secret that was released to the public. And the Pentagon Papers... Terrorism has been with civilization from the beginning, and it will be there till the end. We're going to be as successful fighting terrorism as we are fighting drugs with, with a war. It doesn't work. What you have to do is to begin to change the whole foreign policy. The Republicans, who are charging Democrats about, about not going for the defense of this country, my God, this invasion brought about more terrorists. Osama bin Laden must have been rolling in his blankets Senator, how happy he was over our invading Iraq. Time is Senator Gravel. Uh, 30 seconds, please. No, with respect to Iran, we, we've sanctioned them for 26 years. We scared the bejesus out of them when the president says they're, they're evil. Well, you know something? These things don't work. They don't work. We need to recognize them. And you know something? Who is the greatest violator of the non-proliferation treaty? The United States of America. We signed a pledge that we would begin to disarm, and we're not doing it. We're expanding our nukes. Who the hell are we going to nuke? Senator, Tell me, Barack, who, who, Barack who's, I'm not who are you to want to nuke? Any, I'm not planning to nuke anybody right now, Mike. I Good. promise you. Good. We're safe there for uh, a while. Senator, uh, senators both, thank you any of our troops die in vain when they go and do the duty that's been given to them uh, by the commander-in-chief. No, I don't think they died in vain. But I think the question, the question is, the question is, what is going to be done to stop this war? The other people have raised the question earlier. And in fact, uh, Senator Obama spoke just a minute ago. The Pentagon Papers proved to the American people that the presidents had been lying about Vietnam. They knew it wasn't winnable. They didn't know what they were supposed to do. And so when you're sitting there listening to these conversations, like, okay, we're in a war, so uh, how, do we, uh, how do we win this thing? How do we turn this into a victory? Right? So what, we're supposed to genocide everybody? Well, that's not a, really a victory now, is it? So over many presidencies, Truman lied, Eisenhower lied, JFK lied, LBJ lied, Nixon lied. Nixon went ape shit over Daniel Ellsberg. So Nixon, the imperial president, the most powerful man in the world, was like, hey, this guy that released this report, he's the devil, and we've got to do everything that we can to tarnish and fuck him over. But Nixon couldn't take Daniel Ellsberg down. He was very charismatic and confident. Nixon, all he did was just show how insecure he was, and then one blunder after another, then he's resigned. So he's losing the gasket over Daniel Ellsberg. Now... Mike Gravel read this into the official record. They're all scared that they were, you know, reading classified documents. They were all going to go to... My name is John. I'm from West Virginia. My question is for Mike Gravel. In one of the previous debates, you said something along the lines of the entire deaths of Vietnam died in vain. How do you expect to win in a country where probably a pretty large chunk of the people voting disagree with that statement and might very well be offended by it. I'd like to know if you plan to defend that statement or if you're just going to flip-flop. Thanks. John, why would you think I would flip-flop? I've never flip-flopped before, and I like to question. I don't get very many of them, but I'll just tell you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Has it been fair thus far? I'll tell you, John, it's a set-up question. Our soldiers died in Vietnam in vain. You can now, John, go to Hanoi and get a Baskin Robbins ice cream cone. That's what you can do. And now we have most favored nation trade. What did all these people die for? What are they dying for right now in Iraq every single day? Let me tell you, there's only one thing worse than a soldier dying in vain. It's more soldiers dying in vain. Senator, Senator Obama, are the soldiers dying in Iraq in vain? Our soldiers have done everything that's been asked of them. They deposed Saddam Hussein. 
Uh, they have carried out extraordinarily difficult missions uh, with great courage and great bravery. But uh, you know, one thing I have to say about uh, Senator Clinton's comments uh, a couple. Remember when Mike Gravel gets up there and he reads the report and he's just crying. He is just blubbering because he's like, the government has been lying. They've been lying and they don't stop. They can't stop themselves. And we keep killing people in Vietnam. So I remember when Mike Gravel was able to read the Pentagon Papers into the official Senate record. I don't, I don't remember it. I saw a video, a documentary of it on Daniel Ellsberg. It's a great documentary. Check it out. But he shows that history will absolve Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, and Julian Assange in due time. What was Daniel Ellsberg's crime? That he released classified information that he thought was relevant to the American people, that the American people should know about information. So there was a report, it was written, he released a report, supposed to be top secret, So and then he released it to the media, and then there was a Supreme Court case, and the Supreme Court says that the media does not have to be a bunch of sycophants to the government, they can maintain their independence. And then people said that the relationship between the media and the president ever since then has, you know, been, uh, the media has been independent. It wasn't just echoing, you know. Uh, moments ago. Uh, I, I think it's terrific that she's asking for plans from the Pentagon. Uh, and uh, I think the Pentagon response was ridiculous. But what I also know is that the time for us to ask how we were going to get out of Iraq was before we went in. And that is something that too many of us failed to do. We failed to do it, uh, and I do think uh, that that is something that both Republicans and Democrats... Mike Gravel, when it comes to the war, when it comes to universal basic income, when it comes to instant runoff voting, when it comes to making Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico a state, he's even questioning the penny. Does the penny really make any sense? So Mike Gravel's a badass. I love Mike Gravel. God, he's so awesome. If every American could be as badass as Mike Gravel, we would have one hell of a country. I remember when Mike Gravel was in the debates and he said that every person who died in the Vietnam War died in vain. And the only thing worse than a soldier dying in vain is more soldiers dying in vain. Barack Obama recognized his debate skills, his argumentative prowess. He was saying, God, how would you like to debate against Mike Gravel? Mike Gravel does need to be in the debates. He does need to be in the conversation. He's the one that's calling for a hard left flank. We need Mike Gravel's policies, but at the very least, we need his rhetoric right now. We need him to be on the debate stage, so if you have time, give him a dollar. He just needs 65,000 individual donors in order to meet the threshold to get into the debate. Check out his incredible website. Lots of issues, lots of policy statements. Even Mayor Democrats have to take responsibility for it. When I am President of the United States, uh, when I send our troops into battle, uh, I'm going to be absolutely sure that it's based on sound intelligence, and I'm going to tell the truth to the American people, as well as the families who are being asked to sacrifice. To the question of, did the troops, are the troops dying in vain, though, yes or no? Uh, I never think that uh, troops like those who are coming out of the Citadel who do their mission for their country are dying in vain. But what I do think is that... Marianne Williamson is fundraising for Mike Gravel. She sent out an email saying, hey, help my friend out. Help Mike Gravel get on the debate stage. Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson is for a Green New Deal, universal health care, reparations. She's got a lot of, you know, interesting progressive policy points. She's anti-plan, but Mike Gravel has a ton of plans. So, you know, that might be a marriage made in heaven right there. So that good for Marianne Williamson and it'd be great for Mike Gravel and it'd be great for the country if we actually got to hear Mike Gravel get back on the debate stage. Go about the White House agreeing that the parliament, the Iraqi parliament, could take a month-long vacation because it was too hot. While our men and women are putting their lives on the line every day, here's my question. While the Iraqi parliament is in vacation, is George Bush going to be on vacation in Crawford, Texas? What we need to do is turn up the heat on George Bush and hold him responsible and make this president change course. It is the only way he will change course. He will never change course unless okay, he's made fine. to do it.